Everything is turning to sh <gasps> And I wonder how it started, Sylvie. Sylvie is who? Anyway, that trailer promises the time-hopping show we were totally expecting from the second season of Loki. But before we get there, it's been over two years since the season one finale. So here's what you need to remember before the season two premiere coming October 5th on Disney+. Plus. Season one began the way it ended, with Loki, or a version of him at least, doing something crazy and paying the price. Picture it. 2012, New York City, Avengers Endgame. Our trickster god slash villain slash anti-hero grabs the Tesseract and boom, he's in the Gobi Desert and under arrest. I've made a huge mistake. So Loki's now in the custody of the Time Variance Authority, which exists to protect the sacred timeline, AKA the predetermined chain of events for everyone in existence. Because if that's disrupted, a multiverse could form. A multiverse of madness, if you will. <laughs> Anyway, Loki became a variant after he messed with the timeline by grabbing the Tesseract, and Judge Ravona Renslayer finds him guilty of timey-wimey shenanigans. Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. But Loki's saved at the last minute by TVA agent Mobius, who's investigating a string of timeline crimes committed by a particularly dangerous variant. And why does he need Loki's help, specifically? The variant we're hunting is you. I beg your pardon? And that version of Loki turns out to be way more awesome than anticipated. Meet Sylvie. This isn't about you. Loki follows her through a time door, because who wouldn't, and learns what she's up to with the TVA. Your years in the making plan was to tear the place down, create the ultimate power vacuum, and then just walk away. But then the duo starts bonding, and we dig deeper into Sylvie's motivations. The universe wants to break free, she says, so it manifests chaos, like her being born the goddess of mischief. As soon as that created a big enough detour from the sacred timeline, the TVA showed up, erased my reality, took me prisoner. Sylvie escaped, but everywhere she goes, she causes a nexus event, because she isn't supposed to exist. So her real goal is to infiltrate headquarters and kill the timekeepers as payback for them destroying her life. And by the way, everyone working for the Bureau is unknowingly a kidnapped variant, too. I was told that everyone who works at the TVA was created by the timekeepers. That's ridiculous. They're all variants, just like us. The god and goddess bond some more, and we're detecting more than a little chemistry. Check that. Dangerous chemistry. Two variants of the same being, especially you, forming this kind of sick, twisted, romantic relationship, that's pure chaos. That could break reality. It's breaking my reality right now. But you know who all that chemistry is really bad for? The TVA. Because now Loki's on board with Sylvie's plan to bring them down. Or at least get some answers. Everyone who works at the TVA, the timekeepers didn't create you, they kidnapped you from the timeline. So before this, you had a past. Maybe you had a family. A life. Meanwhile, Sylvie shares the hard truth with Hunter B-15. I looked happy. What now? Those pitches end up working, and now we have a super team motivated to take the Bureau down. But Renslayer goes on a pruning spree, which sends our heroes to the Void, a place where everyone and everything from a pruned timeline branch is sent, and introduces them to even more Loki variants. Not very snuggly. <laughs> okay. Is it a tablecloth? No, it's a blanket. Thank you. My pleasure. Loki and Sylvie grow closer as they escape the void and reach the end of their journey, the Citadel at the end of time. That's where they meet He Who Remains, the man who creates all and controls all, including the TVA. He knows everything that's about to happen before it happens, and his death could start a catastrophic multiversal war. So whatever you do, don't stab him. Anyway, Mr. Remains downloads his backstory for Loki, Sylvie, and us. A scientist variant of himself, who lived in the 31st century, discovered other universes stacked on top of his own. As these universes collided and the variants met each other, peace and harmony gave way to an all-out war for power and control. The battle stopped when He Who Remains weaponized Eliath. Remember him? That scary smoke monster from the Void? And used it to end the multiversal war. Now the TVA and Sacred Timeline exist to prevent chaos from happening again. And if someone were to, let's say, stab him, 
infinite variants would appear, kicking off that multiversal war we mentioned. So here are Loki and Sylvie's choices. Kill He Who Remains, or return to the TVA as its benevolent rulers. Sylvie chooses violence, but Loki tries to stop her. Sylvie, stop. Stop. <gasps> Betrayal. Sylvie opens a time door, pushes Loki through it, and does that stabbing thing she probably really definitely shouldn't have done. These, uh... With that, the colorful timeline outside branches like crazy, and the multiverse of madness has entered the chat. Ah! I made a huge tiny mistake. Meanwhile, back at the TVA, Mobius returns to confront Renslayer, who's determined to believe the Bureau's work had some kind of purpose all along. So instead of pruning Mobius again, she makes one of those dramatic time door exits. Where are you gonna go? In search of free will. And now Loki's here with a desperate warning for Mobius and B-15. But they don't recognize him. Or at least these versions don't recognize him. Loki's confused and terrified, especially when he checks out the huge stone statue of He Who Remains towering over this version of the Bureau. And that's it. Except for the Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania end credit scene. It's set in the late 1800s, early 1900s, at a small exhibition being led by a very familiar-looking Victor Timely. In the audience, we see a wide-eyed, horrified Loki sitting next to Mobius. You made him sound like this terrifying figure. He is. So Loki's clearly on a time-hopping mission to find variants, with Mobius along for the ride. And that's where we are heading into season two. Go to TV Line for our full Loki coverage and let us know your season two predictions in the comments. For TVLine.com, I'm Rebecca Iannucci.